five things that are killing your email results. I've audited hundreds of email accounts, and these are the top five things that brands do wrong in their email marketing, costing them hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in email revenue. I'm Nikita from aspectagency.com, and let's jump right into it. For number one, having an irrelevant above the fold section. Above the fold is simply the first section that people see when they open up your email. Now the mistake that most brands make, they take up that entire above the fold section with their logo, the a menu bar, and a big image that goes on for way too long. And when someone opens up that email, they click on it, and they see an image that's just irrelevant to them. There's no headline, call to action, the timer, there's no urgency built up within that email. If they don't see something relevant to them within the first couple of seconds, they're gonna click off that email, causing lower click-through rates, maybe even some email bounces that could hurt your deliverability down the road. So make sure when you're creating that first section that a person sees in the email, you include a headline that's relevant to what the email is about, a call to action, so that way when people do see the headline and they see a call to action, they know that they wanna click on it. And then lastly, make sure to include a timer if it's an, an urgent-based email or some more relevant information like a, a small sub-headline. Number two, bad subject lines or irrelevant subject lines. Now, when they receive an email, a bad subject line or a subject line that makes no sense could cause your click-through rate to drop. The subject line is essentially the first step in the conversion cycle for a person when they're opening your emails. A subject line is irrelevant or isn't standing out in the inbox. That means you're gonna have a lot less opens. If you have a lot less opens, you're gonna have less clicks. If less clicks, that means you're gonna have a lot less visitors on your website. With less visitors, your conversion rate's gonna plummet. If you have less conversions, you're gonna have a lot less revenue for your brand. So you wanna make sure you make your subject lines short, simple, and to the point. You make them relevant by including dynamic tags about the contact. That could be something as simple as their name, uh, the date, or the day that they're being sent at. The next thing is having too much text. I know that there's a debate on whether you wanna go with text only or image only emails. Simply put, whichever you use, if you have a big paragraph of text, and I'm talking big paragraph, almost an essay like, that could cause people to back out of the email. People these days have a goldfish-like mentality. If something is a lot or overwhelming to read, that would cause people to back out of that email. Then when those people back out, that could be a signal to Google of this email is not relevant and it could lead to spam or it could lead to the promotions tab. So you wanna make sure that your email is very easy to read. There's a flow to it. Having text uh, formatting is very important. So utilizing bullet points, using number points, uh, utilizing icons, breaking up a paragraph of you know three different of three ideas in that paragraph into three different sections with images correlating to them can help you out with improving the flow of the email as well as improving the readability of that email so people actually go through it and skim it rather than read a whole essay when they get that email and number four is not tracking your deliverability deliverability is the make it or break it for your email marketing. The lower your deliverability, the lower chance people on your list are gonna see your email. So we wanna make sure that our deliverability is on point. If you do wanna improve your deliverability, there's a video up here or down here somewhere that'll pop up. I go over in-depth steps on how you can improve your deliverability especially your deliverability tracking. Now, one of the first things you'd wanna do is install Google Postmasters to make sure that you're tracking your domain reputation as well as your IP reputation and seeing if there's any spam complaints going on your domain. The next thing you'd wanna do is go through your Klaviyo deliverability tab to see that all the inboxes that people have signed up for are actually being delivered. So that means your Gmail, your Outlook, your Apple Mail, your Verizon Media Group, all of those different domains that people have their email addresses under have different deliverability reports. And you wanna make sure that on average, all of your deliverability across the board is above 30%. If it's under 30%, you might need to do some segmentation work. Now lastly, and this one is a very big surprise for most people because they don't even think about this, having a bad pop-up could cause a lot of issues. Now let me paint this picture for you. Having a bad pop-up can cause less people to subscribe to your email address. And when you have less people subscribe to your email address, you're gonna have a smaller list, which means you're gonna have less people to market to when you have promotions, sales, 
etc. The other thing that it could cause is when you have a smaller list uh, or less people signing onto your list, when you have abandoned browse or abandoned site or abandoned view based automations, less people are likely to get those emails because they're not a part of your email list to begin with. It is a make or break between having a big list or having a small list. And just to do some simple math, a pop-up that converts at a 1% versus a 5%. So let's say you have 100 visitors per day visit your website. A 1% pop-up rate, that means only one person a day is going to join your email list. Now, when we have a 5% pop-up, that means five people per day out of 100 visitors are gonna sign up to your email list. Now let's extrapolate this over a month period. With the 1% pop-up, you're gonna have 30 people sign up within that 30 days to your email list. But with a 5% pop-up, you're gonna have over 150 people sign up to your email list with a 5% conversion rate. Now when you take the two, with a 5% pop-up versus a 1%, you have 120 more people that you can market to within that month and months going forward because of a simple conversion rate change on your pop-up. Now think about this in bigger terms with hundreds of thousands of visitors visiting your website. That 4% difference is a major blow to your email list and a major blow to the email revenue when you're sending out emails. So a couple things you can do for your pop-up conversion rate percentage is trying out different offers, trying out different strategies, as well as different messaging within your pop-up so you can have a better converting pop-up. That's pretty much it. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit subscribe. Do you want me to do a video on pop-ups? Let me know in the comments down below. And that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.